Good afternoon, everyone. Another ice-free Arctic forecast by the experts. Wrong. Summer ice gone by 2015. Professor Wadham's wrong again. Arctic methane group, early September ice gone. Wrong. 2016, they were predicting the minimum of 3 million square kilometers or under. Wrong. Yet the same Professor Wadhams keeps coming out. Arctic could be ice-free for the first time in 100,000 years. I guess they didn't look back in the last 10,000 to see the climate being several degrees warmer Celsius than today. In 1962, the U.S. Navy surfaced at the North Pole where there was no ice. Wrong models showing 2 million square kilometers and under. This year had 4 million square kilometers plus. 2013, 14, 15, crickets. It was above today. We don't hear anything. Moving the goalpost again, it's going to be 2020 now before the ice-free conditions come. Greenland's going to get warmer and more ice is going to melt. The melting number of days is even under the average, all modulated by the 60-year multi-decadal oscillation cycle. And that increased cloud cover, that's because of cosmic rays and our decreased magnetosphere due to the intensifying grand solar minimum. Professor Wadhams from Cambridge University. Keep calling less ice and less ice and it's never metamorphosized so you should lose your funding and I should get it because I'm calling more correctly what's going to happen with our global climate system than you are. Claiming that the ice will be gone by 2015. You started your claims back in 2007. Then it was supposed to be ice gone by 2013. And then this year you were calling a million square kilometers or under ice free, which is not ice free by the way. A million square kilometers is still a million square kilometers. But anyway, it's not even close. It's up around 4 million. Now you're pushing the goalpost back to now it'll melt in 2017. Now it'll melt in 2018. And part of your Arctic Methane Emergency Group as well got the forecast completely wrong. As early as September 2015, it's going to melt off. And since you stated that the Arctic could become ice-free for the first time in more than 100,000 years, I don't think you did your research because... If I can find this climate data chart here that shows from the Egyptian cooling going up far warmer than today over the Holocene, the Minoan warm period, and the Roman warm period, we're way down at 31 C. Those last periods were at least 2 C warmer than today. And if we look around 5,000 years ago, the temperatures rose at least 4 C minimum. And you guys are griping about a 1.5 C rise. Did you not see this data? Also, for the last 8,000 years, you've had relatively amazingly stable weather conditions. Are you kidding me? A 4 degree C rise starting around 5,000 years ago up into the Minoan warming and you call that stable? And again, your whole group and the whole IPCC screaming about 1.5 C. And that was over a 4 C rise and that's stability. You can only fool the people for so long. And if you didn't believe the Greenland ice core data, why don't we jump down to the Vostok ice cores that show the exact same temperature variant. Warmer several times than it was today throughout the past. And if we go back in the last 15,000 years and look at this as well, peer reviewed from the Younger Dryas forward. Oh yeah, you can't explain the Younger Dryas warming, can you? It jumped up literally 20 degrees C commencing 13,000 years ago. And the headlines claiming from 2013, the North Pole became a lake. Professor Wadhams, use Google, use Wikipedia. North Pole, 1959, ice free. U.S. Navy surfaced there with the skate submarine, the first nuclear submarine, by the way, to surface at the North Pole when it was ice free. Again, 1962, 63. These are the images for you in case you didn't see them. Also, a little bit slushier conditions in 87, but remember, we were cooling then on a natural cycle, but the Navy was still able to surface three subs there. And I don't know how much more wrong it can get using this type of NAME model here, showing 2 million square kilometers of ice going to decrease down to 1 million, yet we're back up to 4 million. You're still following these kind of models? I personally believe you should lose your funding and start giving it to people who are going to tell the truth. And there's so much conjecture over the second lowest minimum for Arctic ice. 
which day did it occur on? Nobody can agree on. What was the actual surface amount? They're having number of differences going on here. Jump over to WhatsApp for that. They have a full rundown, which I've linked below. It shows you the exact dates, numbers that are completely in disarray. So this second lowest is even in dispute. And what about the years 2013, 14, and 15, Professor Wadhams? What you said, we're going to be ice-free by then, and the ice increased. Trr, trr, trr. Crickets, nothing heard, yet you put out more bogus forecasts calling again and again for less ice. Sea ice thickness, September 15th, 2016. That is a lot of ice for being no ice and ice-free. And we'll see it again and again. Let's take a look from 2010. When those predictions you made in 2007 didn't come true either. Gaining ice throughout that time. No retraction for false statements. No apology for scaremongering. And some of these new RICO laws that they're trying to pass to prosecute scaremongers of the climate debate. You should be named in that as well because you're fear mongering everywhere and the ice has not come anywhere close to disappearing like you forecast. Even real science, the global warming rah-rah squad, even admits the melt season this year was about a month shorter than normal. And these statements about the air over Greenland getting warmer, which is going to create more melt. Let's take a look at the Greenland ice sheet today. This comes straight from NASA. And we'll dive right in here on the melt extent days. And you can clearly see as we get into September... Below the 1981 to 2010 average and overall throughout the season, except for April, everything was pretty much in the 2% standard deviation range. And when we look at longer term ice, global sea ice area, you'll see from 79 to 2016, 17. I don't think, I don't see anything scary on this chart. It's all within the deviation there. Barely anything under 16 million square kilometers. And if we look at Arctic ice since 2006, I don't see any gargantuan drops offs below normal. I'm going to say that this is a natural modulation. When we look over longer time frames, Arctic temperatures in different stations around Arctic Circle, going back as far as 1880, natural variability, up and down in cycles. Again, when we're looking at Polar bear regions, somehow the polar bears survived the 1930s when it was much warmer. And it's a cycle, it decreased, it increased, now we're going to decrease again. I'm going to say that your forecast is definitely going to be wrong. The ice is not going to decrease this year. It's going to increase this next summer. The number of millions of square kilometers is going to increase from the 4.1 million. I'm saying it's going to increase. You keep saying it's going to decrease. You've made wrong calls for how many years now? So obviously you don't have the right data. If somebody can put out better forecasts than you can, they should receive your funding money because you're not able to do the job correctly with so many bad calls. If you were a stock trader, you would have been fired eons ago. Northern Hemisphere high latitude surface temperatures really track the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. Now, the Potsdam Institute coming out truly saying that we're going into a grand solar minimum, but in damage control, they're trying to say that the solar activity is not going to outdo man-made global warming gas emission heating. Even they're coming out to try to explain the new heavier snowstorms by saying more evaporation increases more intense individual snow events. You'll find it again and again, global warming increases intense rains and snowstorms, and cosmic rays are the cause of all the cloud cover which prevented your melting this year. We need look no further than Heinrich Spensmark's research with the cosmic rays, clouds, and climate. There's a direct relationship with global cloud cover and the amount of cosmic rays coming in. That's the cause of all the increasing cloud cover globally. And that research is even backed up by CERN. So with all this new information coming out, Peter, I encourage you to watch Spensmark, The Cloud Mysteries, so you get a good grasp of when our Earth's magnetosphere decreases and declines during a grand solar minimum, which we're entering right now. 
the whole overdrive machine of trying to explain it and keep the global warming hype going. Now there's going to be even more snowfall in the Arctic, according to Dr. Elizabeth Thomas. Why don't you call her and ask her about all this increasing snow and cloud cover and how that's going to affect the melting next year. Oh, by the way, give Heinrich a call and see what he has to say about his cloud nucleation from the increased galactic cosmic rays. Take a look in Google and Wikipedia and look at the melted ice just even decades ago, not hundreds of thousands a year ago. And maybe you'll get a clearer picture of where the climate's going to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. As you can see, this whole agenda of smoke and mirrors to get you to believe that the Arctic ice is going to continue to melt when there's so much other data proving otherwise. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. And as always, please consider hopping over onto my Patreon, Adapt2030. You can support my work there, and I'll keep more stories like this coming to you.